So simple random sampling is when you randomly take people out of the population. So normally you think about this as kind of like taking a name out of a hat. In real life, we normally don't do that. If you did do this, you would take the sampling frame, you'd cut it up, you'd put, take everybody's name, you put it in a hat, and you'd sample, right? But that's not exactly what we're going to be doing uh, nowadays with simple random sampling. Instead, what we normally do is we take a sampling frame and we take a random number generator and let that tell us which person we're going to, uh, to select to be in our sample. So let's kind of give uh, some background. Let's say that this is, these are the 50 people, right? If you remember, here's all the 50 people that, I, that are in my population. And I want to sample of 10 people. I want 1 through 10. OK? So I want a sample of 10 to be in my study. All right. These are the 50 that are actually in the population. And so from the 50, I need to sample 10. For it to be simple random, each person in the population, so there's 50 people in the population, so all 50 people have to have an equal chance of being in my study. A simple random is that there is an equal chance for every person to be in my study. Now, the reason why we call this a representative sample is because based off of randomness, we would assume that 50 people, any 50 people that we choose, would be, uh, would be representative, right? So if we have enough people, it should be representative. If every person has an equal chance, then it should be representative. So let's go ahead and try this right now. Right over here, I have random.org. This is a random number generator, okay? There's lots of different ways we can do this. But let's go ahead and say, I have the minimum number is one, the maximum is 50, and let's start generating some stuff. So here's my, here's my uh, sampling frame. When I generate a number, number 26. So the first person in my sample, the first person whose name I'm gonna put in here is gonna be number 26. And that is Leah, right there, okay? So what I'm looking at is right here, number 26 is Leah, and she is going to be the first person in my sample. Okay. Now I need another person. Generate another one, number 19. So the next person who's going to be in my sample is going to be Myrna. Then 42 is Yvonne. And I do this until I have the people I need. Number five is going to be Yesenia. Twenty-four is Cherie. Seventeen is Eliza. Twenty-seven is Inga. Oh, number five got selected again, but Yesenia is already on our list, so we can't use her again. So we've got to get a new number. Seven is Libby. Nine is Luella. And then the last person in our sample is going to be number 45, is Wen. All right, that would be a simple random. The random number generator just gives us each different person, just like we were, we were picking it out of a hat. That's the basic idea. Some problems we can have with simple random. Number one, if you don't have a sampling frame, you can't do it. If you don't have a list of everybody, you can't do simple random because not everybody has an equal chance of being in the sample. Number two, because it's random, we would assume that things uh, would be pretty close to representative, right? But the problem is that if I've only got 10 people in my sample, 
I, you know, I, I might be representative, but I might not. Now, in this particular case, what we noticed was the first nine people were actually female, right? But when was the only male that we chose, right? That means that 10% of my sample is male, whereas in the actual population, 20%. So even though this is technically called a representative sampling, uh, you know, a representative sample, it was not representative in terms of gender for this particular sample. Because randomly, we only got one male out of 10 instead of two males out of 10, which is what the, uh, what the population would expect it to be. But that is how you do a simple random. That is similar, but not the same as systematic sampling. So the next one is systematic sampling that we need to talk about, systematic sampling. So let's go back to our list. In systematic sampling, it's similar to a simple random, but we're gonna be a little bit more systematic about it. What we do is, let's get rid of the sample. We're gonna get a new sample. So let's erase these. And this time when we do our sample, we know that we want 10 people. We know that there's 50 people in the, um, 50 people in the, population. So why do we have to just go and do this random thing? That took too long. So what we're going to do is instead of generating 10 separate numbers, we're going to randomly generate one number. That's 19. So number 19 is Myrna. So Myrna is going to be the first in our sample. And then since we know we want 10 and there's 50 people in the study, all we need to do is count Every, five, every fifth person from Myrna and have them be in our study. So Myrna is number one, two, three, four, five. Let's do Gwyneth as the next one. Gwyneth. And then from Gwyneth, we need five more. One, two, three, four, five. There's Faye. And then five more. One, two, three, four, five. Maynard. And then from Maynard, one, two, three, four, five, Lachey. So all I'm doing is starting with one randomly chosen person and then taking every fifth person after that. That's all I'm doing. So after Lachey, one, two, three, four, five, Danae. And then after Danae, one, two, three, four, five. I got Abe. And then after Abe, one, two, start at the beginning again. Three, four, five, Miri. And then one, two, three, four, five, Elida. Finally, one, two, three, four, five, Rihanna. And then you'll notice that that's going to get us close to Myrna again. Okay? So in this case, instead of every person having a totally equal chance, all we did is we, we randomly chose the first person and then took every first, uh, fifth person from there. So that was systematic sampling, sometimes called systematic random sampling. Each person has an equal chance because we're taking it off the list in an equal way. And we start with a random person that means that we should have a representative sample. Now, in this particular case, you'll notice that we have Maynard and Abe, and those are the two males. So we actually have a more representative in, in terms of, of at least gender in this case than we did in the original one. So, that's un, so that is systematic sampling. The third one we need to talk about is cluster sampling. Now, cluster sampling is a lot different from what we've been talking about. You'll notice that in our group that we have right here, we have all 50 people. We have a sampling frame for the entire population. Well, so let's remember we said that this was going to be uh, a building, right? An, an apartment building. And these are all the people who live in the apartment building, everybody. Well, let's say that I don't just want that one apartment building. Let's say that I want all the apartment buildings in the entire city. So let's say that's all the apartment buildings in the entire city. 
nobody has a sampling frame that has every apartment building in the entire city. We, we just don't have that. We don't have that. So instead, we rely on the cluster. The cluster is an, a group that already exists. And so specifically, I do know how many apartment buildings there are in the city, but I don't know, I don't have a sampling frame for each one of the apartment buildings so that I could do a simple random or systematic sampling. However, the owner of each apartment building does have a list of everybody who lives in their apartment complex, right, in their apartment building. So what I do is instead of randomly sampling the people, I randomly sample the cluster. In this case, I would randomly sample apartment buildings. So let's say that there's 100 apartment buildings in the city. I randomly sample 10 of those apartment buildings. And then I use everybody in the apartment building to be in my study. All right. So cluster sampling is when you have a group that naturally exists. You randomly choose a certain number of groups and use everybody in that group to be in your sample. It's similar to multi-stage sampling. In multi-stage sampling, what you do is you do the cluster sampling first, but then instead of taking everybody in that cluster, you randomly sample or use other some other form of, uh, of sampling after you've chosen the cluster. So instead of just choosing 10 apartment buildings and then and then having everybody in each of those 10 apartment buildings be in the study, I choose 10 apartment buildings and then I use systematic sam uh, random sampling uh, with each of those 10 apartment buildings so that I get my sample from there. So multi-stage, you start with cluster and then you use another sampling technique. Stratified random sampling. Stratified random sampling gets at what we were worried about before. So let's take a look at our list one more time. So if you remember, we had this list of, of 10 people, okay? There are certain strata. A strata just means like a characteristic or a category that we happen to know about. So for example, we know that in our population, it's 20% male and 80% female. We also know that in our population, we have 32% Republican, 32% Democrat, 32% Independent, and 4% Libertarian. So a stratified random sample, excuse me, yeah, stratified random sample would say, let's take a sampling technique, but we wanna make sure that we have a specific stratification. We wanna make sure that we have the correct proportion of, let's say it's males and females. And so what you would do is you would sample until you have the right proportion. So the way we would do it, let's go ahead and, and do this uh, kind of in, a same, in the same way we did it before. Let's do this though, instead of male and female, let's do it with Republicans, Democrats, Independents, all right? We want roughly a third to be Republican, a third to be Democrat, a third to be Independent. That's roughly what we want it to be. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's, let's use systematic sampling, but then let's make sure that it fits into the strata that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to random.org and I generate a first person. Let's have that person be number 28. Number 28 is going to be Faye. Now, if you look here, you see that Faye is a Republican, right? So I'll put a little R over here to know that Faye is a Republican. Okay, now I'm going to choose five people after Faye. One, two, three, four, five. Now I got Maynard. Maynard is an independent. So let's put Maynard on here. Maynard is independent. All right, fine. Then we keep going. One, two, three, four, five. We've got Lachey. Lachey is a Democrat. Lachey is a Democrat. All right, good. After Lachey, one, two, three, four, five. We've got Danae. And Danae is a Republican. All right, we're okay so far. Now remember, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get my political affiliation to be the same. That means that I only want three Republicans, three Democrats, three independents, okay? So after Danae, I'm still okay because I've got 
I've, I'm still going. One, two, three, four, five, Abe. And Abe, if you look down there, Abe is an independent. Abe is an independent. All right, after Abe, we've got one, two, three, four, five. And that's Neary. Neary is an independent. Okay, and after Neary, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Alida, who is a Republican. And then one, two, three, four, five. Rihanna. But here's a problem. Look at Rihanna. Rihanna is an independent. And I've already got one, two, three independents. And that's as many as I could use. So now what do I do? Because this is stratified random sampling, what I will do is I will skip Rihanna. Why? Because I've already got the proper proportion of independents. And when I hit that strata, 32%, I, I don't go over it. I want to make sure that this is not, it doesn't have too many independents in it. So I've got to skip Rihanna and go to the next one, two, three, four, five. Sarai is a libertarian. And that's okay because we don't have any libertarians yet. One, two, three, four, five. Gwyneth is a Democrat. Uh, now you'll notice that we've got one, two, three Republicans already, and that's as many as we can have. We've got one, two, three independents, and that's as many as we can have. We have one libertarian, that's as many as we can have, and we have two Democrats. That means that I need the next person to be a Democrat in order to hit that strata. So when I go one, two, three, four, five, I'm back to Faye. That's a problem for me. I can't do that. So because I know that we were doing systematic before, if I keep doing these five, I'm going to end up with the same people. So I'll just go to the next person here, Flita, who is a Democrat. And if she was a Republican or an independent, I would go five from her, etc. With stratified random sampling, what you're trying to do is make sure that your sample is in the same proportion. It's stratified the same way as the population. Now that can be different in different ways, right? So for example, in this particular, uh, in this particular one, we happen to be stratified in terms of republic in, in terms of political party, but we're also stratified in terms of male female. We've got Abe and uh, Maynard, right? Who are our two males, right? Now you notice that. It doesn't matter if you use simple random or if you're using, using you know, systematic random. That doesn't matter. What it matters is that your sample needs to end up being the same strata as the population. It has to have the same stratification as the population up here. That is your goal according to stratified random sampling. You're using some form of random sampling technique, but you're making sure that it fits within the strata that you want it to. All right. Finally, the last thing is oversampling. Okay, let's look back at our most recent one. Now you'll notice that in this entire population, there are two libertarians. And so in this particular sample, we have Neri, and Neri is, in, is, sorry, is independent, where is it? Sarai, Sarai is a libertarian. Sarai is a libertarian, okay? Well, here's a problem. Sarai is a libertarian, and already her being in the sample, because I only have 10 people, she is 10% of my sample, even though libertarians are only 4% of the entire population. But the other problem is, do I feel comfortable with having just one person represent the entire group of libertarians? What if, what if we are doing a study on uh, income, and I want to know... Uh, my hypothesis is that um, libertarians have a higher income than, than other political party affiliations. If I only have Sarai, that doesn't feel like it's going to be particularly representative, right? Because it's only one person representing the entire group. 
So what will happen with oversampling is sometimes you will oversample, right? Instead of just taking Sarai, who is this libertarian here, we also take Libby, the other libertarian. And between Libby and Sarai, we know that they're going to be overrepresented, overrepresented in the sample. They're going to be way over 4%. But the reason why we would oversample is because just having one person represent the entire group doesn't feel, I mean, if, if that person is an anomaly in any way, then suddenly it gets really complicated. So what we would do is we would take Sarai and Libby's data. We would take both of them. We would oversample, let them be in our sample, but then we would take their actual results and mathematically we would make those results be only 4% of the impact on the entire study, right? So we would mathematically oversample, take the whole thing just to make sure that we have enough variation inside that small group. And then we would mathematically cut down their proportion of their influence back to 4% of the final group. Okay. So those are the representative samples that we've been talking about. They're based on probability. The idea is that because of probability, if you use a simple random, then that should be representative of the population. And if you get a big enough sample, then it should be. So one problem is got to make sure it's big enough. Simple random, it's like pulling out of the hat, except that we do it math numerically with a random number generator. Systematic, that's when you randomly choose the first person and then take every fifth person after that, or however many you are to get your sample. Cluster, you take a naturally occurring cluster, randomly sample uh, the clusters, and then take everybody in that cluster to be in your sample. Multi-stage, you start with cluster, and then within those clusters, you use some other form of uh, random sampling. Stratified, you make sure that your random sampling is stratified within whatever strata happens to be. And then oversampling is when you take one group and make sure that they are oversampled. Make sure you have too many uh, from that one group. Then mathematically, you reduce their influence after that. All right. So we are going to go ahead and ask one question really fast, and then we're going to be done. There it is. Which of these is least likely to require a sampling frame? The answer is cluster sampling, because a sampling frame is a list of everybody in the population. And so what happens is when you use a cluster sample, you only need the list of the clusters, not a list of everybody inside of those clusters because the, they have their own lists, right? So when you're using cluster sampling, you don't need an, a whole sampling frame. For the other ones, simple random, you have to have a sampling frame. Stratified, you have to have a sampling frame because you need to know what the strata are. Systematic, you need to be able to go every fifth one or whatever the number is. So cluster sampling is the least likely to require a sampling frame. 